Hi, this is John Whitaker for the Mathematical Analysis 2 class, and this is our 30th video lecture. And today we want to talk about point pointwise boundedness, uh, uniformly bounded for a sequence of functions. We're also going to talk about a collection of functions being equi continuous and do some examples and one theorem about the equi continuousness. Um, so let's start off with these definitions. This lecture should be a lot shorter and maybe even more enjoyable than the previous lecture. So here's the uh, first definition. It says we're going to let f sub n be a sequence of functions <laughs> defined on a set E. We say F sub n uh, is pointwise bounded on E. If the sequence F sub n of x, n run from 1 to infinity, is bounded for each x in e. Okay. So the F sub n of x is bounded for each x. That's what it means to be pointwise bounded. Uh, there, uh, that doesn't mean that there's one bound for all x. For each x, there might be a different bound, but there is a bound to be pointwise bound. <clears throat> In other words, <clears throat> f sub n is pointwise bounded. On E, if there exists a finite value function we call it phi defined on E uh, such that the absolute value of f of x will be uh, less than phi of x, and that's for all x in e. And uh, n run from 1, so here it should be f sub n, yeah, f sub n of x. n run from 1, 2, 3, whatever. Okay. Well, another type of uh, boundedness for a sequence of functions is called uh, uniformly bounded. And here's its definition. <clears throat> we let f sub n uh, be a sequence of functions. Defined on a set E. We say this sequence of functions, F sub n, is uniformly bounded on E. 
if there exists a number m such that the absolute value of f sub n of x will be less than or equal to m, and that's true for all x in e and uh, n equaling 1, 2, 3, 4, forever. Okay, so this m bounds each one of the functions over its whole domain, and that's what it means for the function to be uniformly bound. So point-wise, for point-wise bounded, there's a m sub x that works for each x. Okay. Um, here, for uniformly bounded, one m bounds them all. It's like Lord of the Rings. Let's look at a fact. It relates uniformly bounded and point-wise bounded. Well, if f sub n in the sequence of functions is uniformly bounded, So let's prove it. Proof. We let F sub n be uniformly bounded. You want it. Then, uh, that means by definition there exists an M, an M that's greater than zero. Such that for all x element of e, f sub n of x is less than m, okay, and that's for uh, all n element of j. Okay. Thus, For each x in e, So for each x I'm sorry, I just can't say it. For each x in e f sub n of x is a bounded sequence thus the sequence S of N functions is point-wise bound. And that concludes the proof. Next we want to look at some examples. We will consider minus 1 over n, okay, this is f sub n of x, then, uh, 
the sequence of f sub n of x. And we'll look at it, uh, let's look at it. Uh, on R. Okay, for the whole real life. Then <clears throat> f sub n of x. Let me, let me write it this way. And for particular x of n of x, we see that x squared minus 1 over n is definitely less than um, x squared. And so that's the phi of x that we need for the uh, definition, if you will, for pointwise now. Uh, thus, The collections of S of N are pointwise bound. However, this sequence of functions, S of N, are not uh, uniformly bounded. greater than zero, there exists an x in R, say x equal to m plus 3, and an n, okay, element of natural numbers, say n equal to 100. Such that f sub n of this particular x, okay, will be greater than or equal to m. So no matter what m you think it might be the uniform bound, it, it won't be because I can get a real number uh, and uh, a spot in terms of the sequence says that uh, f evaluated that spot, uh, f, uh, the f sub n, that, that spot in the sequence functions, evaluated that x is going to be bigger than the m that you gave me. Here's another example. If we let f sub n of x be equal to sine of n times x, then the sequence of functions f sub n of x is uniformly bounded. That's easy to see. For sine of anything is bounded between 1 and minus 1. So as that's the value of f sub n of x. It's going to be less than or equal to 1. So this is my m. I'd like to write up what we're going to be interested in in terms of some questions. So, uh, these are two questions. So, a question we are interested in is 
if the sequence of functions f sub n is bounded in some sense, okay? Will the sequence have a subsequence that converges in some? In general, the answer is no. So what kind of conditions might make this happen? And additional conditions. Then we have another question we want to ask about. So another question is that you can tackle. Um, is whether or not every pointwise convergent um, sequence of functions f sub n has a uniformly convergent subsequence of functions. Of n to k. In general, the answer is no. And so, what kind of conditions do we need for this to happen? Before we get to a new definition and facts later, this new definition, let us look at an example. <clears throat> Let's let F sub n of X be defined by its x squared over x squared plus the quantity 1 minus n times x to b squared. Where, we're just going to find it on an e that is 0 and 1, so where x is an element of 0 and 1, and of course n here is 1, 2, 3, and so forth. Here's the first thing to notice. Note that uh, the absolute value of f sub n of x, uh, that's going to be equal to absolute value of x squared plus x squared plus 1 minus nx to b squared. So this part right here is non-negative, and you're adding it to x squared, so the bottom is definitely going to be bigger than the, the top. So this is going to be less than or equal to 1. And so that says the sequence of S of N's is a uniformly bounded sequence okay. of 
also know that the limit as n goes to infinity of f sub n of x. Uh, so uh, as n gets really, really big, this n times x is going to get really, really big. It's different from 1, but it's going to get really, really big. Uh, you square that, it gets really, really big. Um, you add that to some number, that's still a really, really big number in the, the uh, bottom. In the top, x squared can never be bigger than 1. And so this is going to go to 0 point-wise. Now, note, f sub n of 1 over n, which will be equal to 1 over n uh, squared, all over 1 over n squared, uh, plus uh, 1 minus n times uh, 1 over n squared. That's equal to 1. And that shows no subsequence of f sub n can converge um, uniformly. on 0 to 1. Alright, so now we want to look at a uh, new definition. It's a long definition, so I'll start it over here. Here's the definition. A family script out of complex functions is called F. Defined on the set E. space X is said to be equicontinuous alright so what does it mean to be equicontinuous alright <clears throat> On your x bar continues on e. If for uh, every epsilon greater than zero, so for each one of these epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta bigger than zero such that the absolute value of f of x minus f of y will be less than epsilon whenever 
the distance between x and y is less than delta. And this is true for all x and y in E and uh, for all f uh, element of script f. Just to point out one more thing here in this definition. What we're saying is the same delta works for all the f's. I'm going to write that down. All the F element of script F. Okay, that's what we're saying. This kind of gives some kind of a bound on the rate of change for the Fs, for all of the Fs. Let us look at a uh, fact. So if um, script F is an echo continuous. collection of functions defined on E. Then, or I should say, and F is one of the functions in script F, then F is uniformly Continuous. On E. And that stems directly from the definition of equi continuous family functions. And I'll probably leave that as a problem for homework, you guys. Let's look at uh, an example, two examples. So if we looked at script F being a collection. Uh, families, let's say f sub n of x equal to x raised to the n, n run from 1 to 50, uh, on, uh, we'll say 0 to 1, that Collection is not equi continuous. Okay. And another example is if we had script F uh, equaling to the set of F sub n's equal to just n, so those are constants. Uh, that is a family, or is a y continuous. Is an equi continuous collection. Defined on R. Now let us uh, give a theorem. Okay. It says if f sub n is a pointwise bounded sequence of complex functions. On a countable set E, then the collection 
of f sub n So f sub n has a subsequence f sub n sub k okay. such that the sequence f sub n sub k of x converges. Every x in e. We'd like to prove this. Okay. So we let x sub i, i running from 1 to infinity, be the point. of E arranged in a sequence. So we can do this because E is a countable set. Okay. Since F sub N is pointwise bounded, pointwise bounded, Then the f sub one, f sub n, I should say, of x sub one, okay, uh, is bounded. Because that's what it means to be pointwise bounded. If each one of these sequences evaluating a particular um, input value is going to be bounded, that sequence is bounded. And then we had something, the Balzano Rajas theorem. That, that gave us a result about f sub n of x sub 1, that sequence of complex numbers. So, um, there exists a subsequence <clears throat> denoted by, it's a subsequence of f sub n of x sub 1. So, I'm going to denote it by f sub 1 k, where k is what's running. Such that this sequence acting on x sub 1 converges as k goes to infinity. Okay. Alright, so this is true. Because Any bounded sequence of complex numbers has a convergent subsequence.
That's a fact we proved in analysis one. So what we're going to do is we're going to examine uh, sequences. Here's what I'm going to look at. S sub 1, S sub 2, S sub 3, represented by S sub 1 is... <clears throat> 1, 1, F of sub 1, 1, F sub 1, 2, F sub 1, 3, F sub 1, 4, S sub 2 is going to be F sub 2, 1, F sub uh, 2, 2, F sub uh, 2, 3, F sub 2, 4, and so forth. And S sub 3, in terms of notation, is going to be F sub 3, 1, F sub 3, 2, F sub 3, 3, F sub 3, 4, and so forth. And it goes on forever in this direction. Okay. So we're going to look at these. How are they defined? What are we doing? What properties do they have? Let me listen to it. which have the following properties. Uh, first of all, S of N is a subsequence of n minus 1, b, f sub n k of x n, that is a sequence, converges, this is statements, converges as k goes to infinity. And lastly, the order in which functions appears, which functions appear, uh, is the same, or is maintained, in each sequence. Okay? Alright. Uh, so, here's what we're doing. Come back here. Essentially, the, for X of 1, there's a subsequence of uh, the S of N's uh, because they're point-wise bounded. They converge. Here's a, that subsequence. Out of that sequence, okay, then uh, that sequence acting on x sub 2 is also bounded, and so we can find a subsequence of that that converges. So everything here is a subsequence here, okay, that's what we're saying. And uh, what we also have is that middle property is that if you look at, like for this one, f sub 3 uh, of k, k moving here of x sub 3, that's going to converge, because that's the way we're defining this sequence that we're pulling out, this subsequence that we're pulling out. Okay. What we're going to look at is these diagonals. Okay. 
So we're going to find the sequence based on this diagonals of these subsequence. So we define S to be F sub 1, 1, F sub 2, 2, F sub 3, 3, F sub 4, 4, forever. Then, what we have is F sub n n of xi converges uh, as n goes to infinity. And that's for all i. And that's what we were trying to prove. Trying to come up with this subsequence that converges. Okay, and it's the point it's pointwise convergence, but it's convergence. Okay? That's what the theorem was stating. We just proved. One more theorem to prove, and that'll be it. Here's what it says. It says, if K is a compact metric space, um, if uh, F sub N that's F sub n, is an element of C of k. Well, C of k. They were all continuous, bounded, complex functions defined on k. And this is true for n equaling 3 g, n equal 1, 2, 3, forever. And if F sub n converges uniformly on k, Uniform. Okay. Uh, then the collections of S of N is equal continuous. So we're going to prove this. So here we let epsilon be greater than zero be given. This is going to be uh, one of those rules where we're going to use uh, epsilon over three argument. We're going to get uh, absolute values of uh, three different quantities involved. And uh, by definition here for equi continuous. We need a delta bigger than zero such that for all x, y element, such that whenever, yeah, I said whenever, <clears throat> x and y are elements of k with the distance between x and y is less than delta, then that's going to give us that the absolute values of f sub n of x minus f sub n of y is going to be less than epsilon, and that's for all n element j. That's what we want to show. So we've got to come up with that delta. Remember, we have uniform convergence, so 
since this sequence converges uniformly on K, then there exists, I'll say, an N, an integer, it's a natural number, such that for all N and M bigger than or equal to N, F sub N of X minus F sub M of X will be less than epsilon over 3. So in particular, for all n bigger than or equal to big N, f sub n of x minus f um, sub big N of x, that's going to be less than epsilon 3. It has to be a little bit more specific here. And this is true for all x element k. This statement was also true for all x element k. That's because of the uniform convergence. So the next thing is to use something about compactness of k. And that since uh, f uh, well, I'll say it this way. Since uh, continuous functions on a compact set are uniformly continuous. Then, okay, there exists a delta sub n, and that's going to be a greater than zero, such that for every x and y in k with the distance between x and y being less than delta sub n, um, f sub n of x minus f sub n of y inside absolute values will be less than epsilon over 3. <clears throat> now what we're going to do is let d, or let delta equal to the minimum of all the delta sub 1, delta sub 2, up to delta sub n, this big n that we've discovered before. Then, For all x and y element of k with the distance between x and y being less than delta f sub n of x minus f sub n of y okay. <clears throat> will be less than um, epsilon over 3 is what we have. Okay. And this is true for all n, or this is true for, for n equal 1, 2, 3, all the way up to big n. Okay. Now, 
if n is bigger than bn, and d of x comma y is less than delta, then here's what we look at. The difference between f sub n of x minus uh, uh, f sub n of y <clears throat> inside absolute values is equal to, so we're going to add and subtract some of the same thing. So f sub n of x minus f sub big n of x plus f sub big n of x minus f sub big n of y plus <clears throat> f sub big n of y minus f sub little n of y. Okay. So I just added a bunch of f sub big n's of x's and uh, f sub uh, big n's of y subtracting them for new terms. And that's going to be less than or equal to by the triangle inequality applied a couple of times. f sub n of x minus f sub n little x okay. plus f sub n of x minus f sub big n of y plus, this is f sub n of y minus f sub n of y with big n here. And then each one of these is less than, this is less than epsilon over 3 because of the uh, uniform convergence <clears throat> plus this is less than uh, epsilon over 3 because of the uniform continuity plus this is less than epsilon over 3 because of the uniform convergence which equals to epsilon and so we have it So that concludes this proof. That also concludes the lecture for today. Thank you very much for your time and patience.